Hello there. Welcome to Just the Discs. In this episode, uh, I'm just doing a quick unboxing of my Vinegar Syndrome package for the month of August. And I got a couple extra pickups. Um, a new partner label and a VSA, which I haven't picked up in a little bit. Um, so I'll go with those first, and then I'll just give you... Again, this is just really... Breezy stuff. Uh, brief unboxing. I will start with the new partner label, and that is VHS Hit Fest or VH Shit Fest, um, and their uh, inaugural debut release as a partner label, the Corn Shucker. And um, on the site, here's what the. Uh, inside looks like which I think is the way that the old VHS used to look like um, on the site I think or on Dan Kinnam's uh, Facebook or somewhere they had described it as David Lynchy or eraser heady and it is definitely that if you like eraser head it's kind of like a micro budget backwoods eraser head or something like that I mean it's it's not an easy one to describe, um, but it features the corn shucker uh, who looks like that guy in the corner. His head isn't all bulbous like that, except when he um, when he's trying to control people's minds. Uh, but yeah, it's an interesting movie. He uh, lives in this like sort of rundown house in the woods kind of and people just keep coming by to talk to him and they say things to him they pontificate at him he says I know that's his basically only line of dialogue that he repeats throughout the film and lots of weird folks come and see him you know uh, and uh, it's it's bizarre it's a bizarre episodic it's sillier than Eraserhood like lighter you know in a lot of ways and you know I dug that about it but it is black and white I think it's shot on 16 I think the director said um boy now I can't remember um but anyway there is a commentary with the director uh Brando Snyder and interview with him as well and uh I guess the corn shucker is a mythical creature who has lived simply and peacefully with nature, but now he is besieged by urban sprawl with nowhere else to go. He is forced to deal with varmints and outlandishly odd townsfolk as his food supply diminishes. The corn shucker is confronted by the bigoted old man, Thomas in an act of desperation. Corn shucker is forced to do the unthinkable. His existence in peril, the mysterious world he inhabits could be destroyed. Only nature and the townsfolk will decide his fate. Uh, this Lynchian Midwestern-filmed, nightmare-fueled movie sadly never found an audience uh, It the audience deserved. It was released on an extremely limited VHS in the 90s, but was pretty much lost until now. Director Brando Snyder brilliantly manages to mix dark comedy elements of Twin Peaks and a Razorhead with actual Bigfoot and mythical monster folklore elements in a strange, unique fever dream uh, you will never forget. Uh, oh yeah, the original 16mm film elements were lost. All that remained was a VHS so please be advised that the transfer quality is confined to the limitation limitations of that format. I mean, it, you know, it does look like a VHS upgraded, but it's still 16. So, but ultimately it's such a weird dreamy film. It didn't really bother me, uh, the format. So I don't know. Interesting movie though. If you're into sort of oddball cult cinema, uh, I do recommend checking it out. And I am very curious what this label uh, does next. So that is the corn shucker. Uh, and then as far as my VSA, I grabbed Unmasking the Idol, The Adventures of Duncan Jacks and Boone, his, uh, baboon, I think. And that is your hard case. And this is the inside flipped artwork. And, uh, it is a James Bond meets Raiders of the Lost Ark kind of movie from 1986. 
and it's pretty fun. Uh, it definitely has some fun ninja stuff. Um, some, I think it's filmed all in like North Carolina or something like that, which is fascinating. Uh, directed by Worth Keeter, starring Ian Hunter, who has a really interesting quality about him that he speaks and he loves to talk and continually open his eyes really wide on random phrases and it's bizarre and will make you want to imitate him afterwards. Anyway, uh, he plays Duncan Jacks. This is the first of two Duncan Jacks films. Maybe we'll see the second one from Vinegar Syndrome. I don't know. Uh, but um, I I just uh, had, I think I'd thought I'd started this years ago, but I'd never had a good copy of it. And so this is a really nice looking copy. It is newly scanned and restored in 2K from its 35 millimeter interpositive and includes a commentary track with director Worth Keeter moderated by Phil Smoot. The mission begins 68 minutes an extended making of documentary featuring interviews with director Worth Keeter, lead actor Louis Dula, AKE Ian Hunter, uh, actor Shang Tai Tuan, cinematographer, stuntman, camera assistant, animal trainer, Fun stuff. 68 minutes, so a full, you know, basically feature-length doc. Duncan Jacks is a world-renowned secret agent and expert ninja. When he's not saving the world from international terrorists, he spends his time training in martial arts with his baboon sidekick, the aptly named Boone, who is very funny in the movie and who um, has a fun gesture that he repeats throughout the film. And he's actually a highlight, um, really. He's really great. Uh... However, Duncan's new mission may be the most dangerous of his career when he's tasked with stopping the sale of atomic weapons and defeating a mysterious mass supervillain known only as Scarlet Leader, who's very much like a Cobra Commander type with a little twist. Um, anyway, it's fun. Produced by the inventive North Carolina-based EO Studios, directed by prolific filmmaker Worth Keeter. Uh, it remains one of the studio's most ambitious projects, containing many impressive action and stunt sequences, as well as a hot air balloon chases. Yeah, there's a great opening sequence. I gotta be honest. The movie can't quite top its opening sequence in terms of how that plays, but it, there are some really fun sequences and some fun sets, you know, um, in terms of like, you know, Big Trouble in Little China y kind of stuff. So, anyway, that is Unmasking the Idol, the VSA release. And then next we have uh, Incredible Melting Man, this uh, famous film, well-known. This is a 4K release. Um, I haven't had a chance to check this one out yet, just got this, but this is a well-known sort of cult item. While on the first ever voyage to the rings of Saturn, an unexplained phenomenon takes hold of the astronaut Steve West and his crew, burning all but Steve to a crisp, somehow able to return to Earth. Steve awakens in a hospital bed, uh, only to discover that his body is disintegrating. Worse, he begins to develop an instinct, instinctual urge to kill, learning that this is the only way to maintain his strength. After escaping from the hospital, Steve begins to ravage the nearby countryside, brutally murder murdering all who cross his path, and leaving behind a series of mangled bodies covered in his dripping flesh. <laughs> I forgot that he does melt on people, basically. Legendary drive-in favorite and showcase for some special effects, genius Rick Baker's earliest work, William Sachs's Incredible Melty Man, offers an oozing 1970s tribute to 50s sci-fi cinema featuring veteran TV stars Burr DeBenning, Michael Aldridge, along with culture actress Cheryl Smith. A rare performance from director Jonathan Demme and starring Alex Rebar as Steve West. Uh, let's see. Newly restored in 4K from its 35mm original camera negative. So this is going to look as good as this will ever look, really. Um, and let's see here. Sorry. Includes um, obviously a Blu-ray and a 4K archival commentary track with William Sachs. It's a war half an hour brand new interview with writer-director William Sachs. Just Show Up, 15 minutes, a uh, brand new interview with script supervisor Sandy King, archival interview featurette with William Sachs and special effects artist Rick Baker, and another archival interview with another effects artist, uh, Greg Canham. Um, but I'm definitely looking forward to checking this out on 4K. 
at is the Incredible Melting Man. And next up we have, let's see here. Uh, I guess I can go to the Forgotten Jelly set. Uh, this is the volume five. Can you believe it? They've done five of these. Uh, this is cool. Um, so this set, classic uh, Vinegar Syndrome design. And I'm going to go through these kind of quicker. Um, first we have White Dress for Marie, or sorry, Muriel. Uh, this one is from 1972. When Muriel was a little girl, she witnessed her father murder her mother along with an adulterous lover before killing himself. Years later, Muriel uh, has invited a group of friends over for a party at an isolated villa. That's all I really need to know. Um, you know, beyond that, I'm already in. So, uh, from the t depraved mind of... Romano Scavellini, Nightmares in a Damaged Brain, comes White Dress from Mariel, uh, Euro Horror Icons Evelyn Stewart, and Ivan Razumov. Made during the height of early 70s giallo fever and taking cues from psychedelic craze of the 60s, complete with colorful scope photography. Oh, I like that. Uh, newly restored in 4K from its original Technoscope camera negative and featuring an assortment of new archival interviews with the cast and crew. Very cool. Next we have nine guests for a crime. Uh, it says nine members of an extremely rich and hateful family have decided to have their month-long reunion on a remote island in the Mediterranean. No sooner than their arrival, old grudges, resentments, and feuds make themselves known. Again, sounds like, you know, a bunch of people in a place, stuck, going to kill each other, kind of. One of many Giallo, uh, Gialli, which loosely adapted Agatha Christie's landmark novel, Ten Little Indians, prolific spaghetti western director, Fernando Baldi, Texas Adios, also directed um, uh, Treasure of the Four Crowns, which I talked about on the channel recently, um, starring John Richardson, Oscar nominee Arthur Kennedy, I'm a big fan of his, uh, Massimo Fasci, and featuring a score by Carlo Savina, House of Exorcism. Bring the suspense-filled sleeper to Blu-ray, sporting a new 4K restoration from its original 35mm camera negative, along with a fresh interview with one of the film's surviving participants. So these two are both all region. And last we have Tropic of Cancer. And this one is from... This is from 77, Nine Guests for a Crime, and this one is from 72. Uh, so Tropic of Cancer, Fred and Grace Wright are vacationing in Haiti in the hope of repairing their failing marriage when they run into an old friend, Dr. Williams. Excited to share the news of his latest work, Williams explains that he has developed a powerful aphrodisiac which doubles as a hallucinogen. Intrigued by their friend's discovery, the couple quickly find themselves embroiled in a high-stakes plot to steal the drug, all the while, a mysterious killer or killers begins viciously doing away with anyone who gets too close to uncovering the truth about the formula. One of the strangest gialli, both in terms of setting and storyline, to emerge from the genre's golden age, co-directors Eduardo Malargia and G.M. Paolo Lomi, uh, Tropic of Cancer, takes an unconventional approach to the black glove killer structure, adding in elements of high-concept crime, film, and Fellini-esque surrealism. Gorgeously photographed in Technoscope by Marcello Masiacci. Uh, lusciously scored by Piero Olimiani. Umiliani. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Featuring a fresh 4K restoration from its Technoscope camera negative. And original Italian and optional English dub. Sex, Voodoo, and Dictatorship, 33-minute interview with the director, audio essay by Rachel Nisbet. Very cool. Just out of curiosity. Nine Guests also features both original Italian and English dub. And this White Dress for Marielle says... 
Italian language. Ooh, I think this is only in Italian. So that's the Forgotten Jelly Volume 5. Then we have Hot Snake. Uh, Guns and Guts. Rene Cardona Jr. And this is uh, a Western. Actually, it's two. Fans of uh, Western genre will agree that 1960s and 70s were the height of the spaghetti Western. Western films produced by Italians were more than gritty more gritty and violent than their American counterparts. However, some fans may not be aware that equally violent Westerns were being made in Mexico around the same time. Uh, presented here are two excellent examples, both darker and bloodier than many spaghetti Westerns produced during the same period. Hot Snake and Guns and Guts. Uh, so two by Rene Carduna Jr. Region free, newly scanned and restored in 4K from original 35 millimeter camera negatives. Uh, interview with Ray Cardona the third, versatile artwork, etc. So Rene Cardona westerns, very cool. I did not know he did westerns, so very curious about those. And last but not least, we have The Birds Two <laughs> Lands End, which I've always meant to see because I'm a huge fan of The Birds, and I know that it's. A far cry from the original Hitchcock, and it's barely even connected to that film. Um, newly scanned and restored in 2K from its 35 millimeter inner positive. Oh, commentary track with film historians Amanda Reyes and Sam Pancake. So Amanda Reyes on this one. Um, Ted and Mary have just moved their two young daughters to the sleepy coastal town of Gull Island so that Ted can complete work on his thesis. Everything couldn't seem more picturesque about their new seaside home, that is, except the increasing number of aggressively behaving birds. After surviving an unprovoked nightmare avian invasion, Ted becomes determined to figure out the cause of their unusual behavior, an investigation which leads him to uncover sinister goings-on in the nearby waters, all the while the birds increase their now deadly attacks and move up from family pets to human victims. One of a handful of direct-to-cable television horror movies produced in the early to mid-90s by Universal, Birds 2 Land's End is a jaw-dropping animal attack spectacle from the director Rick Rosenthal. Oh, I didn't realize he directed this. Bad Boys as well as Halloween 2. Um, which stars Brad Johnson, James Naughton, and Tippi Hedren. Oh, she comes back. Never released on disc, Vinegar Syndrome brings this notorious sequel to Blu-ray, newly restored from its 35mm inner positive and featuring comprehensive interviews with the cast and crew. Uh, don't Remake Hitchcock Movies, a 54-minute extensive making-of documentary featuring interviews with its cast and crew. Silence of the Birds, 17 minutes, interview with composer Ron Raymond. Locations of the Birds 2, 11 minutes, uh, with production assistant Craig Edwards. Very nice release. You know what? I'm a sucker for Animal Attacks anything. And I didn't even realize that Universal had produced this. For some reason, I thought it was some kind of cheaper one-off. I mean, it is a one-off, but still. Um, that's a that's an interesting cast. So um, I'll be watching. I might watch The Birds 2 first. I don't know. Uh, but it's a nice-looking uh, group of titles from Vinegar Syndrome. They have announced, um, of course, Amityville Horror in 4K for next month. Very exciting. They're doing a lot of high-profile stuff in 4K. Uh, and very curious to see how they'll finish out this year, but it's been a nice year for subscribers in terms of some big releases from Vinegar Syndrome themselves. So anyway, that is it for this unboxing. Uh, I may report back on some of these titles, but just wanted to give you a heads up as to what was in that box and what to expect from it. And also those two, the VSA and the uh, new partner label title. So anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.